Welcome to Kill Team, the fast-paced skirmish board game where special operatives fight for objectives, dodging from cover to cover in tight, confined spaces. This game will be aimed at beginners like my wife and myself as we learn to play going along. As well, we have a special guest who will be judging us from the corner, giving us support. As stated, Kill Team is focused on unique teams, so the game is played out by alternatingly activating models to shoot, move, charge, and complete objectives. We'll show you each action type you can do as we go along so that you, way you can enjoy the game and learn as you go. The mission that we have chosen this time is Loot and Salvage. We must control objectives and complete actions on them to gain victory points. At the end of the game, the player with the most victory points wins. We have laid the table out in this fashion for the kill zone, so that way it is equal for both sides and giving us the chance to activate and get into each of these, depending on how we move. As you can see, each one of these are laid out in the way that it was shown before. Sona is playing her Sisters of Battle. She has her four sisters as well as an icon bearer that is on one half of her team. Each of these have bolt guns. Then she has her sister Repentias as well as her leader, which is the Repentia Superior. They all have eviscerators and the Repentia Superior has whips. On my side, I have three stealth suits with my leader having the fusion blaster. And I actually have a team of pathfinders that are along here as well with two marker light drones as well as a big rail gun that's going to be sitting in the back and taking sniping shots. Each operative has a data sheet that they will use in order to see what they can do. So you can see how much they will move, which is three circles on a gauge, which is six inches, how many actions that they can take per activation, so two, how much defense dice they will roll when they need to defend, three, as well as what they will save at, so a three up. So on a D6, that would be a three, four, five, or six will actually save, as well as how much wounds they will take. You can also take a look at what special abilities they have, as well as what their weapons will do. I will go through the weapons as they come up, as well as the melee options that each of these particular operatives have to keep you in line with the game. To start, Sonam and I are going to be rolling off to see who gets the first activation. We tie on our first dice roll, so we have to re-roll again to see who will roll. Sonam rolls a six and I roll a two, so unfortunately Sonam will be getting the first activation. On the first turn, we deploy each of our operatives one after another alternating. Sonam will go first. When you put down an operative, you're going to give them a specific order. An order is whether or not they are trying to be concealed or whether they're engaging. An engaged operative is going to be shooting and or fighting. Whereas a concealed operative is going to be one that is trying to go from cover to cover and make sure that they don't get shot and are trying to do the objective. They cannot shoot and they cannot fight. On the first turn, Sonam is going to be doing something very simple. She's going to be moving up, going behind cover with one of her concealed repentias and doing the objective. So this ensures that she won't be able to be shot unless, of course, I have a vantage point. I move one of my marker lights up top to put a marker light on that sister. And Sonam moves one of her sisters up top to shoot her bolt gun at my stealth suit. Now, she's going to hit with four dice. On three ups, she's going to succeed, and she gets two of these. They're only regulars, so they're going to be doing three damage each. To counter this, I need to roll how many dice I have for my save, and I have to get the three up. Now, with the stealth suits, they have, because they're camouflaged, they have cover always, so you're going to take one of those dice. It's automatically a save, so I just need to save one more to not take any damage, and I saved both. I move one of my pathfinders up, put him behind some piping and complete the objective so that way I get myself one victory point and keep myself in the game. Sonam activates her Repentia Superior, whipping one of the other Repentia, giving them an extra action when they do their activation as well as move a little bit more when they do move. Then she moves it up so that way it's in cover. Now it's time for the big gun. The rail gun goes up top to get a vantage point on that sister that had the marker light on it. I'm going to be rolling four dice on four ups I hit, but on fives and sixes, it's going to be critical, which deals two extra damage. I get to re-roll because of the marker light. So that's two criticals of one regular hit. Now with the rail gun as well, Sonam is going to be losing one saving dice from this. But what Sonam is going to do is Sonam is actually going to use a stratagem here. She's going to use Divine Intervention, 
which means that she negates all of the damage that's going to be coming from this shot. Very smart on her part, because that means she negated everything that's coming from that railgun. It just kind of passes by. The Emperor's Grace comes down and saves her. Sona moves the whipped Repentia up to get the objective and then uses the dash action to move a little bit further so she could charge my railgun next turn. I then activate one of my stealth suits to shoot a Repentia in the corner using the burst cannon. Lots of shots are going through here. Unfortunately, a lot of them go through. Sona tries to use her Solus and Anguish, but nothing goes through and that Repentia is dead. Some quick shooting with the sister that moves up does some damage to the other stealth suit, bringing it down to six wounds. My leader moves up, gets the objective, brings it down to three. She moves an icon bearer up and gets the objective as well. Lots of movement here specifically, so that way we can get objectives. I move up with Pathfinder to get an objective. She moves up with one of her sisters, get the number five objective. And there is just generally, we are trying to get points. This is the point of the game is to get points. She now is moving one of her sisters up into cover who is engaged and is actually going to be taking a shot at my leader, my stealth suit leader with the fusion blaster. So she will be shooting with her bolt gun once again, so four shots, and she gets a critical. So that means she's actually going to be doing four damage with that. In order to save this, I must get a critical save as well to counter that. So I need a six to get it. Because it is a stealth suit, I still get to keep one save automatically as a save. So I need a critical and I need a regular save to maintain any damage. Roll goes through and I only save both of them. No critical save. So unfortunately, damage is going through on the stealth suit, bringing it down to seven. Now, the final bit of shooting that is in this in this turning point, Zonum is shooting against my railgun. She gets a critical and a regular hit actually two regular hits. So she is actually going to be doing a significant amount of damage to that poor, poor railgun. I'm going to roll and see if I save against the critical. Again, I need a critical in order to save this. No criticals, but one regular save. So I am going to be hitting, getting hit with four bits of damage. That is actually going to bring that railgun pathfinder down below half his wounds. So he is now wounded. What this means is that he is not going to be able to move as fast. So he's going to be two inches less movement and the ballistic skill is going to decrease by one. So he's not going to shoot as well. That's so that's going to be really hard on me. And that is the end of turning point one. Sonam is winning with a four to my three victory points. And with my railgun wounded, it's going to be hard for me to actually kick her off of some of those objectives and gain objective points. So I'm going to have to work very hard in order to, to get past the four that she already has and make sure I win. Now, when we start a new turning point, we re-roll for initiative to see who activates first. We tie again, so we're going to have to re-roll. I get a four, she gets a one, so I will be activating first this turn. Now, when a new turning point starts, you can choose a strategic ploy in order to act. So Sonam is going to be activating Emperor's Guidance, which makes it so that way when she rolls a critical, she can re-roll one of the attack dice and ensure that she can maybe either get it to hit or maybe get another critical. I'm activating first, so I'm going to be hitting with this railgun. It's wounded. I need to I need to activate it fast. So I get a lot of criticals here. I don't get one of them, but that is a critical critical. But Sonam uses Divine Intervention again. She denies that railgun once again ensuring that her models live. Now the dangerous part is she's going to be getting into combat with me, which is going to be hard because Tau are not very well known for their melee combat. Combat and kill team is a little bit funny. It's kind of like you're both trying to hit one another. And if I hit more than she hits, I will be able to actually cause her damage. So she's going to be rolling four dice, hitting on four ups, but each one is going to be five damage. So it's going to take my railgun out if anything goes through. So she rolls one five, but because of her weapon, I must roll a critical in order to save. So I'm going to be rolling three dice and I'm going to be going on sixes essentially. So six is the only thing that's going to save me right now. And I get no sixes. Unfortunately, that is the railgun done. Now we have a little bit of movement here. This is mostly just getting objective. So I'm moving up with a pathfinder to get in cover and get that objective. She's moving around in order to get some objectives. And it's just 
kind of a chess game at this point. Who can get points, who can activate and make sure that we are getting points as we're going along. And that's because that's what matters. Staying in cover, getting objectives. Sometimes killing is not the main objective here. Now, what she's going to happen here is that that Repentia that's behind cover, it's going to charge and it is going to fight one of my Pathfinders. Again, this is not going to be good for the Tau. They don't melee incredibly well. So she's going to be doing her four attacks again, and she's got two criticals this time. So she actually gets to reroll one of those because of the strategic ploy she had. And that's two criticals and a hit. So I'm going to have to do a lot of work here. Again, I have to have only criticals to save. So I need three criticals to be safe. I get nothing. So that Pathfinder is just done. It is completely wiped off the board. Sad days for the Tau. Next up. We have the stealth suit. The main one is going to be shooting the fusion blaster. So this is going to be hitting on threes. It'll do six damage each. Um, and it will only has a short range, though. So let's see if she could save any of those. She's losing two AP. So she only has one save dice. Nope. And she's going to keep trying to save. Now that Repentia is done. That is a lot of damage that is done to that Repentia. Just wiped her completely off the board. It is basically a melta gun a microwave gun that has just shot her. So she's melted. Next up, she's going to be activating the Icon Bearer. What she's going to do with this is the Icon of Purity, which enables five ops for successful hits as criticals. So it just makes anyone that's near her very good at shooting. And then she's going to shoot that stealth suit. She's going to get two attacks dice that go through. So I need to save those. And then I get one that is automatically a save because of stealth suits. And I save another one. That means none of that damage goes through. Stealth suits are doing very, very good. Then I marker light the sister that is up top on the advantage point to get a reroll on it. She shoots another one of my stealth suits. She gets a critical, so she's going to reroll one. I get automatically one save. Let's see if I can save another one. Nope. Moving forward, we have a few more movements just to get objective markers and getting some more points. I'm going to take that stealth suit that is up top and going to take a shot at the girl that's at the back. Unfortunately, nothing goes through. I'm going to move around a little bit more and we're going to see what all other points we can get. Now, we're going to have that stealth suit in the back corner that's wounded shooting the vantage point sister quite a bit kind of goes through. We get two criticals. Nothing else kind of goes through because again, that stealth suit is wounded, so it's not doing as much damage. Now she's going to roll. She doesn't save. She doesn't save that critical. So her sister that is up top in that vantage point is done. Take her away. She's done. Now we're going to have another shooting up into the other stealth suit. She doesn't get another critical, but she does get all hits go through. So let's see what I can do for saves. Again, I only have three dice to save here. But one of them goes through, so two. And it looks like it is going to be quite a bit of damage. But that's the end of turning point two. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to catch up. Same points as last time. Sonam is now sitting at eight. I am sitting at six. So again, I have to do a lot of work here to catch up. I am not getting onto the objectives and I am not getting the points and doing it. So let's see how I can do this and turn around in turning point three. Again, at the beginning of the turning point, we're going to reroll to see who gets initiative. Sonam gets the initiative this time, and she's going to use Emperor's Guidance once again, so that way she gets to reroll some of her attack dice when she does make attacks. And we'll see how that's going to go for her, because I feel like it's going to do very well. She's going to go with this Icon Bearer, and she's going to shoot my stealth suit that's in the corner that is wounded. And she gets a critical, so she rerolls a dice, and she gets another one in. So she has a critical and two regular hits, I get to save one because of the stealth suit automatically. Let's see if I can get that critical. Maybe I won't die this time. Nope, I get one more save, but that critical still goes through. So that stealth suit is done. That is a dead stealth suit. Get it out of here. I don't want to see it anymore. This stealth suit, it was wounded in the last turning point uh, by a shooting attack by one of her girls. I'm going to just do the objective, get some points. She's going to do the same thing where she's going to do the objective and take that objective completely away. It's done. Let's see what she'll do with it. She's going to shoot the other one. So let's see how this one goes. Two criticals and two regulars that just go through. That's going to hurt. I'm probably going to have to lose that one again. So let's see. Yeah, no criticals. That's another self-suit dead. 
I am dropping like flies right now. I don't have the shooting power to get back right now. So we'll see. This stealth suit is just gonna move up. I'm, I'm kind of on a vengeance path now. I'm going to shoot a sister. I, I think I just delete her. Yeah, she's done. That is another sister out of here off that objective, which means I should be able to get it the next turn and get some more points, at least on my side. She's going to move her way up and she's going to deny me that point. She's going to take that objective away. So that way I don't get the point. My pathfinder here, I just take that objective, get that point. So I get something this turn. I am I'm struggling right now. I have to get points. Combat that no point in showing it. That's dead. So we have some more movement. Another Pathfinder moves over, get that objective. She gets her objective and starts moving her way up. So that way she can take the other one and turning point four. So that way she'll gain more points. I'm going to be able to do one extra thing, though. I can do Overwatch to shoot once more. So I am going to, because I have no more models to activate, I get one shooting phase. So I'm going to be shooting at the Repentia in front of me. It's going to be hitting on threes. That's a lot of shots that go through. That is another deleted Repentia. No point in even trying. A lot of damage goes through. But I am completely on the ropes. She has one more model to activate, the sister in the back corner. She's going to move her way out of cover all the way over into the middle, and she's going to take shots at my leader in the center. I left him completely wide open. He was able to delete two models this turn, but I think he's going to get shot here and he has seven wounds left. She gets two criticals and two wounds through, so that's a lot of damage. I get one of them, but I'm going to have to make two critical saves to see if I will actually save my leader for this turn. And oh, I save one of them, but it's not enough. That's seven damage that goes through and deletes my poor little leader. All my cell suits are gone this turn. So that's the end of turning point three. It is 11 to nine. And I think we can kind of see the writing on the wall. We're not gonna show you turning point four because it's just gonna end up being 13 to nine. I don't get any more points because I just have those two pathfinders left and the marker lights at the end. So Sonam wins her first kill team game. I am very proud of her for this. She was a lot of work to go through this and you can see her models actually have looked out pretty good so far. We worked on them together. We're really proud of how they've turned out. But unfortunately, I lost to them. And that's a dead Pathfinder. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please leave a comment on how we can improve and make this overall better. This was a lot of work to edit. And if you want to see more of our stuff, take a look at our Weapons of 40k, where I go over the weapons of Dark Tide and the Imperial Guard, and Sonam goes over the medical implications of it. For now, that's all we have for today. Thank you, and goodbye.